this video we're going to talk about working with octane area lights and for the scene i'm using the rv ship 01.c4d scene which has our space recreational vehicle and some kind of service station here with an hdr lighting environment but there are no additional lights in the scene so let's make one so i'll go to the objects menu here in the live viewer and i'm going to choose lights octane area light this places a light at the center of the scene. So I'm going to use the move tool here to move it into position. And let's rotate it so that it's facing downwards. We move it somewhere kind of like this. And of course, we can also scale it to give it a little bit of a shape. Maybe we want to have kind of like a narrow beam or something like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at the settings for this light. So select the light here and let's go to the octane light tag and take a look at uh, take a look at main. We have a choice between black body and texture. Of course, we can also turn the light on and off using the enable button. Black body and texture are our main two different types of light. So black body basically means that we go into the light settings. We can use the temperature. If we lower the temperature, we get a warm color. If we raise the temperature, we get a cool color. And then towards the middle, we get neutral white. So let's make it a little bit just slightly warm like that. We also have a power, which is the energy output of the light. So increasing or decreasing this will change the brightness. We're going to talk about texture and distribution in the next video in this section. So I'm going to skip those for now and go down to surface brightness. So surface brightness means that the scale of the light is going to impact the brightness of the light. So the larger the size of the light, the brighter it is. If I turn this off and uh, scale the light, so I'll go over to the scale tool, scale it up. No matter what the size of the light is, it's always the same brightness. So if I scale it up really large and go into the octane light tag and turn on surface brightness, we get a much brighter light. And if I scale it down, it gets dimmer or the power output is decreased. So surface brightness is a nice option uh, if you want to keep your lights kind of sort of physically accurate based on their size. But in some cases you might not want to do that. So that option is there for you. Double sided, somewhat self-explanatory. If I turn this on, then it's going to light from both sides of that light plane. The normalized option means that the luminance uh, values of the light or the output of the light is not going to change if you change the temperature. So in other words, if I bring this really to a warm temperature, you can see it's for the most part the same amount of brightness. If I turn normalize off, you can see it's a little bit brighter when we have a cool temperature, but when I bring it down to a warmer temperature, much less energy output, so therefore the light is not as bright. Now, going back to the main tag here, uh, the other type is texture, which means that the light color, rather than being controlled by temperature, can be controlled by a texture. Say, for example, you could use a procedural texture or, uh, let's say, RGB spectrum. So this might be a little bit more intuitive in terms of choosing a specific color. Or you could also use an image texture. Now, one of the reasons why I like to use a black body as opposed to texture is if I'll set this back to black body, you can still use a texture with black body. It will still influence the color of the light, but you also have this temperature setting as well. So black body means that you can use both texture and black body values. Texture means you can't use temperature so that's why I like to use black body. This makes even more sense when we get into working with uh, texture and distribution to create effects like uh, screens, 
lit screens or something like that. So I'm going to clear this and then come down here to sampling rate. Sampling rate, of course, increases the samples of the light, which will increase the quality. This is especially noticeable in the shadows, as well as the amount of noise that is created by adding the light into the scene. But it will also increase render times. So you want to use that um, when appropriate. It's if you're having a, a if you have a scene that has a lot of noise and you just can't figure out what's causing it, um, this is something you can go and adjust on a per light basis, and see if that eliminates some of the noise. Visible on diffuse basically controls whether or not the light output affects the diffuse channel of the materials that are reflecting the light. Same with specular. So if I turn this off, it's just diffuse lighting and no specular. This determines whether or not the light casts shadows. The next setting we want to take a look at is opacity. By lowering the opacity, we can make the light less visible or more visible in the scene. So even though it's emitting light, we can't see the light source. We can increase this and make it 100%, and then we can see the light source. This is also where the transparent emission setting comes in. If I turn this off and I lower the opacity, then that is also going to affect the emission of the light itself. So the lower the opacity, the less light comes out of it. Use light color means that if this is on, if I go to the general tab and I change the color using the in general settings, that will affect the octane light. So it's just bringing in that Cinema 4D setting. So if I turn this off, we get white color again, even though it's shaded red here in the C4D settings. So the layer pass ID setting allows you to create a different ID for each of the lights in the scene. And then you can separate these lights into different render passes so that you can composite the lights and adjust them later on in a compositing program such as Nuke or After Effects. So we'll talk about this more when we get into working with uh, render passes later on in the course. Um, if we take a look at visibility here, we can turn off the visibility of the light to the camera with this setting. We can also turn off shadow visibility. That means the light's still gonna cast shadows, but if there was a light on the other side of this light, then um, it would cast shadows unless this is turned off. If I bring this light down, of course it's red now, which is kind of weird. Go to the general settings and set this back to white. So if I move this down in the scene and rotate the camera view, you can see that on, from this angle, we see a black rectangle representing that light. So if I go to the octane light tag and I don't want to see this black plane, I just want to see the emission, then I can turn off camera visibility. So we still see the emission of the light, but we don't have that black square uh, occluding the rest of the scene. Shadow visibility works kind of the same way. If I had another light, say above this one, and I turned it on, this black plane would cast a shadow in the light emitted from this other light, which is kind of weird. Um, so by turning this off, that means that this light is not going to cast a shadow. This object that is emitting the light will not cast a shadow in light, other lights that might be hitting it. And then we have general visibility, which is very similar to opacity. The octane targeted area light is exactly the same as an octane area light. The only difference is that it has a target, which can allow you to aim the light more easily. So if I create an octane targeted area light, you can see here's the area light, here's the light target. So I'll select the area light. and position it in the scene. And then I'll select the light target and position it as well. And you can see it affects the rotation of the area light we just added. Other than that though, all the other attributes are same between this light and the other octane area light. So that's the basics of working with lights in Octane for Cinema 4D.